Hi everyone, I'm Rosanna and today I want to share a make along with you. Um, we're going to make some miniature spun cotton pies that you can either use um, for a dollhouse or just um, if you like miniature things or for ornaments for this holiday season. I'm also going to show you some other parts of my day. I'm aging paper um, and baking it um, for a little miniature book that I'm working on and I'll be baking a real pumpkin pie because um, Thanksgiving well is tomorrow if you're watching this one I um, released the video but I was baking last week in advance just for a test run so um, I'm gonna take you through some of what I'm making today and I will show you just how to make those little mini pie ornaments so let's get going have a kind of Thanksgiving holiday themed make along today I am wearing um, my Christmas sweatshirt already. That's not necessarily because I like am a Christmas person who already has the tree up. <laughs> I just found this at a thrift store this fall and I love this sweatshirt. So um, I've been wearing it since September. So um, <laughs> and everyone's at first everyone thought it was very fun and cute and now everyone's like stop wearing that sweatshirt every day. Um, anyway, I've been baking today. I have my vegan pumpkin pie that I was so excited to try that I cut it while it was still warm, so it's kind of um, still goopy, but it turned out well, and I thought we would work on spun cotton pies that we can um, make into little ornaments for the tree, so we'll kind of make them around Thanksgiving time. Um, and then we'll take them over into the Christmas season as ornaments for the tree because um, I'm thinking a lot about pie, not just because we normally do this time of year, but because um, my grandma passed away this year. She was a really big baker and pie baker. And so we had pies, you know, for most family gatherings and particularly Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, so I'm thinking about pies to celebrate her, but also her um her house that was built in 1908 um and that she lived in since 1959 which was the year my mom was born um she lived there till 20 fifth no 16 maybe or 17 um and then moved to the nursing home these last like six years anyway they're pulling it down in a few weeks um, and we've been trying to save woodwork and flooring and different things out of there. And so anyway, as her house is going to be gone, um, and as grandma is gone, those memories are very, um, vivid and on my heart right now. And so I thought a pie is kind of a personal but sort of imprint like it's you know it's more like universal like for a lot of us when we think about older women who are gone or loved ones um who were bakers we might associate them with pies and um besides the fact that pies are celebratory so I mean they're just kind of maybe symbolic in several ways this time of year um so I thought making little pie ornaments might be a nice um simple and meaningful project. So we will see how those turn out. I think I've been making pies like this for a couple of years, um, but I'm just gonna kind of show you the simplest version. And as usual, we're gonna be um, making it with our just cotton balls because that's what I know you guys can find. So anyway, let's get making and um, hopefully you enjoy seeing this kind of um, more vloggy style video we'll kind of see how that I, w I don't think I will make these often I don't make any videos often <laughs> um but I thought well for this one where I'm also baking real pies and um thinking about grandma and there's kind of several things tied in I'll just try um doing one that's a little bit um more inclusive than just the art itself so anyway let's get making 
Okay, we're going to need the usual suspects if you've watched my make-alongs before. We're just going to use cotton balls like you get at the drugstore. I am going to talk to you later in the video about the type of cotton that I use um, for things that I make to sell. Um, so if you have that, definitely use it. Um, masking tape and then glue and water mix and I'll talk to you about the ratio for that. Um, it's not scientific, it's just rough. Scissors, I use foil for the base of a lot of my spun cotton. I'm using an X-Acto knife today to make little cutout shapes in the crust. Wire, if you're going to make it an ornament to hang, a darning needle to poke the hole for the wire or the hanger. Um, you might, if you want to try a lattice crust, you could use a piece of fabric for that. I use a layer of thin cotton, um, and you could also use acrylic paint to paint it. I mostly stick to watercolor and a little gouache sometimes. Um, I'm showing you my darning needles here in case you couldn't see it earlier. Um, so what we do is I just start with a foil shape that is roughly, um, the size it's going to be obviously make your shape or your form with your foil a little smaller than what you want your finished pie to be because obviously we're going to be adding um, a layer of cotton to it. I couldn't tell you how thick the cotton usually ends up being probably between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch thick so um, I guess just kind of kind of plan accordingly as you're shaping your foil um, and I think I usually mention this but the more exact you get your shape um, the better if you're using foil underneath the better your sculpture is going to look um, so if you leave a lot of like sharp edges and things you're going to have to do a lot more layers of cotton to cover over that um, so get it kind of as smoothed out as you can and um, make sure that you kind of leave a flat bottom for your pie otherwise it will be tippy and roll around and not sit very flat if you are going to set it down and not just use it as an ornament um, and I do um, you might want to think about whether you're making kind of an apple pie or if you're going to make a pumpkin pie or a lattice top pie. Um, that will affect um, like how kind of convex you make it on the top or if you just make your pie kind of flat on the top. Um, so you might want to have some idea what type of pie you're making to start. I'm sorry, my daughter is um, playing with a bouncy ball while I do my voiceover. Um, so anyway, I then you can try um, covering the foil directly with cotton, but I find that using masking tape over the foil will um, give you a lot better adhesion with the cotton. So I recommend um, covering it. And also, I use the masking tape um, to form a little bit of, I guess, either, it depends on how you're thinking of it, either you're forming kind of the outer edge of the crust or the pastry crust, or you're forming kind of the lip of a pie pan. So it sort of depends on how you're going to make your pie, but I use that thin edge of the tape folded over um, and now my daughter is jumping on the bed, so I don't know if you can <laughs> hear that. Um, I came upstairs to try to be away from the noise she was making, and of course she followed me up. Um, so anyway, then I just trim all those edges of the tape off to get a nice round shape again. Um, and then you just kind of check that you don't have any big lumpy things sticking out. Now I'm just showing you again here to reiterate um, that you want to kind of press down the bottom of your pie to make sure it is quite flat. And I'm showing you too that I would say, um, and someone, a miniaturist, was talking to me about these pies and she was suggesting that she thought the size was roughly like a one-sixth size, which is Barbie size. 
the ornaments um and i think that's about right and i'm showing you a s smaller one that i made um which would be more like a 1 12th size so again i'm wrapping these in tape um, i'm not going to wrap the very tiny 1 12th scale um, pie shape because i do find you can cover small pieces of foil without too much trouble you don't necessarily need the tape around them um, and then you just go ahead and get a little bit of your glue mixture which i think a nice ratio is one um, part glue to three or four parts water i think it's preference I tend to keep my glue fairly, um, glue and water mixture fairly watery because I don't really enjoy having super sticky fingers as I work and I think that my pieces um, are rougher when my glue mixture is too gluey. Um, then I end up just kind of like being stuck to everything all the time. So um, if you're having a lot of trouble um, handling your piece without just like all the fibers constantly pulling away then you probably just want to save yourself some um, hassle and water your glue down some more and like i said this is just school glue pva glue you could use a fancier kind of craft tacky glue or something um but i don't ever find any trouble just using school glue and it's very easy to find um, most of us have have it in our house so i'm just covering um making sure that all of my tape and foil parts are covered with a thin layer and then you just go in and as you are um as you're working you just see where your low spots are in the form that you're covering and you will have to do a little bit of patching in here and there um, but just go ahead and cover it so I've been kind of um, talking about pies some on Instagram, um, having a few conversations with people. This was actually an idea that one of my really good friends had for me. She, I had sent her a little pie a year or two ago and she just loved it so much that she really, really thought I should do a batch of these pies for ornaments this year. Um, she just thought that would be lean neat and full for people and or just something that people would like. So I went ahead and I've done that. And it is true. I mean, people do love my little animals probably the, the most always. Um, but pies are special to a lot of us. Um, they're certainly special to me. I know that not everyone was fortunate enough to have a grandmother who actually did bake a lot of homemade pies. Um, or a mom who did that. We just don't all get that experience. Some of us grew up um, maybe just having pies like once a year on Thanksgiving and you ordered them in from Village Inn or maybe you even just, you know, thought that is it Mrs. Smith or whoever, <laughs> whoever bakes the frozen pies. I know a lot of people really love that. So like I'm not going to be a pie snob about it. Like, and my grandma didn't make pies um like I, you know, I, I, she used Crisco and before there was Crisco, she most likely used lard, which I would never use lard for, you know, because I don't eat animal products and I would never use Crisco because, you know, now we all think it'll kill you. Now, my grandma did live to be 98 and she, um, used Crisco for probably 60 years in a lot of her baking. So, um, you know, there's no hard and fast rule about what will kill you, but I, I do choose to use coconut oil when I bake pie crusts now. But I do, I do think a lot of us um, have memories of pies and special people who made pies for us. Um, or maybe you love to make pies for your friends and family. Um, I don't know, a pie is, there's something about it. It is so sort of it's like the ultimate comfort food i mean there's a few other things that we might think of but pie is right up there and there's something i know that pie is like you know everyone's like afraid of the calories or whatever and <laughs> um but th it's very nourishing and you know my aunt lisa who um 
passed away almost 14 years ago now. She had metastatic breast cancer. Um, and I remember my mom was her caregiver at the end. And it got to the point where she really wasn't able to eat most things. You know, her digestion wasn't working and she wasn't hungry. But she did want to eat pie. That still sounded good to her. And she would, my mom would bake her pies and she just would, mmm, this tastes so good. You know, it just still tasted so good to her. And I think of that and I think of how um, nourishing that was for her physically, but I think also, um, in a kind of soulful, spiritual way, um, pies can be, um, something that feeds us in an almost emotional way. I don't know why that is. I don't know if it is, um, <clears throat> just, you know, what's in it and the, the high fat content, or if there's really something more, um, to baking a pie and somehow putting um, some of yourself into it. I, I do think sometimes about the pastry and how um, as you shape a pastry crust, a pie crust, you know, your hands and your fingerprints are all in that. And it's there's something maybe a little bit more um, personal about a pie than than a cake um, or even a cookie that's somehow you are kind of imprinting yourself on that and I may be getting a little out there but I do sometimes try to figure out well why are certain things um, more meaningful or special um, and I that's kind of all I've been able to come up with and I do think about I've been thinking so much um, as I've been in my grandma's house for the last times um, in her kitchen thinking about how I watched her roll out pie crusts and, um, and just, you know, handle the dough and how she was a pianist and an accompanist. Um, and she had very, um, clever kind of, um, clever fingers, very light touch always when she played the piano, a light touch when she worked with her pie crust. And that's kind of interesting to think of because it is an advantage when you are, um, working with pie crust to have light fingers and not be heavy handed as, um, as we sometimes, some people in our family are heavy handed, but grandma wasn't. Now, um, this is a little, um, technique I found if you want your pie to look like it has kind of a pan um I just ended up using some crepe paper streamers just a little piece cut in half and I just apply the glue and um just put on a few layers of that and then kind of squash it into place and when it's dry it really does kind of give the look of kind of um a disposable foil pan which is how a lot of us um, giveaway pies. And then as I've said in, um, in previous make-alongs, I have now decided that I prefer to paint a lot of my spun cotton while it's wet. So I don't even go ahead. I don't even start the drying process until I have kind of at least a base coat, um, of color on. But with these pies, they're so simple, um, to paint with watercolor. This is real, and I'm just using some coffee and a little bit of, um, yellowish, um, golden watercolor. And because the cotton fiber is already wet, it takes very, very little, um, color and very little time to just, cause it's, you know, it just spreads out very quickly. And that's all I do. Cause I, I used to use, um, either more paint or kind of the brown cotton fibers that I can buy. And I decided that was a little bit darker than what I liked it. Now I just get kind of a real pastry color by um, using more like yellow and a little bit of coffee for a little bit um, of darkening to it. So that's all I do. I just, I just brush on a little watercolor and coffee. And then um, when I've, you know, got that base coat on, I go ahead and I pop them in the oven. And I just preheat, I typically, I just preheat my oven to 350 
turn it off and stick them in. You can even stick them in and preheat it with them in. I don't, you know, I've, I've baked things at 350 for quite a while too. You will get um, a little bit more browning that way. Um, but it takes more than you might think to actually burn, um, a spun cotton piece. So, um, you're pretty safe to have it in the oven, um, for, you know, even with the heat going, but typically I, I just heat it up and then let it sit for an hour or two until it's completely dried out. And then this is how I would do, um, if I'm doing a lattice crust, I just keep it flat and then I paint on the red, um, and, um, let it dry. And then I add the lattice crust on top of it. And then this is what I do before I pop it in the oven. I decided I tried kind of crimping the crust and shaping the crust at different points. And I decided the best time to do it is, um, right after you've painted, because if you do it before you paint, you kind of brush out some of those little indentations that you make. So I have tried with a toothpick. I've done some of this kind of crimping um, with my X-Acto blade, and now I'm using my darning needle. I think the darning needle and the knife blade are a little um, better. The toothpick is not quite thin enough. It's just a little bit clunkier, um, and these do a little better job of actually leaving a mark. Now, um, it wants to, the wetter it is, the more it wants to kind of spring back, but obviously you can't do this when it's dry. You're not going to do anything that stays. So, um, there is probably a sweet spot if you would pop it in the oven and let it sit there 10 or 15 minutes and then pull it out and, um, do your indentations and crimping. That would probably be the ideal time, but, um, this, this works unless you're going for something very, very specific or perfect. So I'm going to pop them in my preheated oven that is now turned off and leave them for an hour or two. Um, if you want to speed it up, you can, you know, turn your oven on again for a few minutes and, um, they'll dry faster. So as I mentioned, um, in the intro, um, my grandma's house is being pulled down um, at the end of this month, at the end of November. Um, and so that has me wanting to, you know, just try to remember her in different ways. And so I've been working on this little, I'm calling it a pocket picture book. And um, I'm finding inspiration um, in a couple of her old cookbooks. I love the spattered and browned um, pages. So, I mean, you know, these are splattered with things from cooking. It might also be coffee. Um, just probably, you know, oil and different, you know, sugars and things that vanilla flavoring, who knows. Um, but I love the, you know, an old cookbook that you can really tell has been used. And so that's how I want the paper for my little pocket picture book to look. Um, so I, I came on YouTube, of course, to see, well, how are people, I mean, I knew we, you know, do the coffee wash, but I didn't really know, like, exactly. Anyway, what I discovered is you just um, take a paper towel, take a piece of cheap coffee paper, um, and just dip it in the coffee and um, wipe it or spread it across your page. And then I just go in with some watercolor and more coffee and just kind of dot around on the edges and corners where I think there would be more staining. Um, then you bake it in a 200 or 225 degree Fahrenheit oven. Um, it takes five or maybe seven minutes for it to get fairly dry and then you go ahead and you iron those pages to get um, some of the wrinkles out. Okay, I'm not here to do like a cooking vlog at all, but um, I just thought I'd show you um, how I kind of put together a pumpkin pie. 
I'm not um, a recipe person typically. I mean, I will look at a recipe if I really feel like I don't have a good idea of how to go about something, but I pretty much never follow a recipe um, exactly. So this is um, a really good, I think a really good, um, it's always, it always works for me. I think everyone, if you want to bake pies, needs the pie crust recipe that just always works. So I did put that down in the description because it pretty much never fails for me. Um, and then for the filling, I just, I just go by feel. So I had baked a butternut squash and I just used all of that and then you know the spices that seemed good for me and a bunch of coconut milk and that's pretty much what's in my pumpkin pie filling um i just don't get very fussy about things because I, I find that as in art with my cooking if i'm gonna get hung up on things being just right i just end up not doing it so um i just try not to make it a high stakes situation and <laughs> and it usually works out um i do tend to use i tend to be generous with um my crust because in my opinion that's the whole reason to eat i mean fillings are great but i mean i i would be and i am often if i'm like really craving pie i just make the pastry and bake it and just eat pastry um I can I can take or leave the filling a lot of times this is my grandma's fork I think it is actually from her grandma um or at least that's how I remember it and she always used a fork like that for um pricking pastry so now I have that that is one thing I have of hers and here are the pieces um, of my or the elements the illustrations for my zine or my pocket picture book the zine is kind of I don't know if it's freaking anyone out but it's just um, a different and new term for a lot of the people who um, kind of follow my art it's you know it used to be more like for um, kind of counterculture um, sort of punk Alter, I don't know, alternative music scenes or just different things like that. So I think maybe it's not a very familiar term. So anyway, what I decided to call my little um, booklet is a pocket picture book um, because really it is kind of just an illustrated little storybook um, about my grandma's house and pie and my grandma, of course. So I've got um, here is a just a bit of wallpaper that I was able to get out of an upstairs bedroom closet that I loved and so I kind of went off of that for my color palette. It's not, it's very hard um, <laughs> to match that aged pink color. I love it, um, but it's almost something that you can't fake or at least I haven't figured out how to quite yet, but I'll, I'm working on it because I do love it. Um, so these are my illustrations and then I'm working on the text to go with it. Okay, so these are not um, the pies that you saw me paint in the previous clips. That The video for these pies, um, for kind of the painting and, and actually um, sculpting them with the cotton, that video did not turn out very well. So I reshot um, that particular part, but I'm going to show you this part with these pies um, where I'm making the little hole for our, for our hanger or the ornament holder. So I just use my darning needle and punch a hole through the center. Um, just hopefully you have a needle that will make a hole big enough to easily fit um, some wire through. You could also, you know, actually string thread onto your needle and do a string or yarn or whatever type of hanger like that um, but I usually use wire and then at least for the little holder part and then I can use ribbon or string or whatever I want later for the hanger itself. Um, I was experimenting with ways um, to kind of display these. I did, um, I started out with some little 
just far fiber board that I painted um, to look a bit like a, pl a charger or a platter. Um, I didn't end up liking the way that looked very well. It seemed, a, it looks fine, I think, if you are just setting the pie, um, you know, on a surface, but when it's hanging on the tree, I didn't think that it looked particularly um, charming. So I ended up not using that, and that's when I developed kind of the idea to use um, crepe paper to make it look like a pan. But you can also just not do anything and just have it look like you know, a pie, um, with, with no pan or anything on it. So I'm using my little X-Acto knife to cut out, um, some small hearts and you just cut through. <laughs> this is where, um, experience does help because I know just about how much cotton I have on the top of my pie, but I'm basically just taking the very top coat of cotton, off. It's very, very thin, um, almost paper thin. So I'm not um, pushing my knife down very far. And this is probably not going to be super easy for you to do the first time. Well, you might get it right. I don't know. Um, so if you are worried about ruining your pie, um, don't be too worried because as long as you have some time to fix it, it's you can't actually ruin most spun cotton things because if you cut too deep or if your shape doesn't turn out you can just patch in your cotton um, and go again I mean you'll have to kind of fix the paint a little bit and stuff but I it's really pretty hard to um, ruin a spun cotton piece so I you can see um, that is probably not even a sixteenth of an inch deep but it's just deep enough um, that you're getting to another layer and then I just use a smaller tipped paintbrush with a little glue and water on it to kind of really press that um, unsealed cotton down press it down so that it's going to look more like you don't want it to be rough and fuzzy um, you want it to kind of ad adhere it down to the cotton below so that you're getting kind of a um, crisp looking or a crisper looking layer cotton can't really be that crisp but um just get it pressed down with a little glue and you might want to clean up your cutout shape a little bit with like um, your darning needle or a toothpick or something just kind of make the edges um, a little bit clearer and um, not as you know like because you're working with cotton so it's going to tend to be a little bit fuzzy um, but a toothpick will help you and then just cut some little vents um, like my grandma didn't do fancy cutouts. She did do, um, lattice crest for cherry pies, but she didn't weave it. She had like this giant, it was like a giant cookie cutter that you just, you know, you'd roll out a circle and then you would just press that down and it would cut all the little, um, squares out so that you would have the lattice looking crest. Obviously it wasn't a lattice cause that means braided, but it would give you, um, the appearance kind of or the effect of a lattice crust without all of the fussing but that's what I mean is like if you're someone who really wants to share a lot of baking and you're busy sometimes you just have to make um, accommodations for that and not be caught up in kind of the snobbery of <laughs> of making something you know that's just absolutely gorgeous or you know the best ever um you just use your, you know, lattice cookie cutter and your family will enjoy it just as much as if you, um, spent, you know, the extra 30 minutes braiding it. Um, so anyway, then this is kind of important. So if you're going to try to do these little cutouts, um, if you have used glue and water to kind of stick the fiber, you know, the fibers underneath down, make sure that your pie is not too wet because when you go in with a color like red, if the fiber um, outside of your cutout has gotten wet when you added your glue and water, um, it will bleed and then you will have, and I mean, that can look kind of like a real pie because you can have some bleeding with fruit fillings and things where it kind of comes up and gets on 
um, your pastry crust. But if you don't want it to just spread out everywhere and make your crust look pink, then you are going to want to let that dry a little bit before you come in to paint. So that's kind of my um, warning is make sure that the rest, you know, the, the parts of your pastry crust that you want to remain the actual pastry crust color and not look like the under layer of fruit filling, um, make sure those are dry or your, the layer that you're painting, you know, the fruit layer that you're trying to give the effect of that is going to bleed, um, onto your, pastry crust so just you might want to let it dry a little bit pop it in the oven before you paint um the red or if you're going to make it look like apple if you paint the darker brown or whatever um so that's my tip hopefully that saves some of you from having kind of a sad um sad time if you if you paint it too, when it's too wet and then you have a pink pie crust um so and then I just I those little vents that I cut I get them a little bit wet and soft with water or water and glue and I use my toothpick to open them up a little bit more um and then I go in and just give a dab of color so that you know it so that you can so that and you can um and I'm going to show you a little bit later. If you don't want to go to that trouble, if you don't have an X-Acto knife or you don't want to go to that trouble, you can just paint, um, you know, on top of your crust without making any cuts. And um, if you don't have an X-Acto knife and you want to attempt kind of a cutout look, you can try it while your cotton is still wet, you know, once you've formed the shape. You can use a toothpick and see if you can kind of make a shape in the top layer of cotton and see if that works for you. It's, I think it will be a little tricky, but it's probably possible. And then your pies can go back in the oven to dry if you want to speed that up. And my pumpkin pie turned out really nice. And here's my zine. I don't have this one sewn together, but this is um, the final sort of version of it. I made 30 copies of this and um, since it's not sewn together I'll just take it out. So that's the little cover. This is kind of, I painted this to look similar to that wallpaper that I found in grandma's closet. Um, so that's what the cover is from. And then I had a few quotes um, from Jane Austen and my Angela and my mom, so that kind of covers all your bases, right? Um, <laughs> and then I just kind of wrote, um, it's probably, it's free verse poetry in a way. I don't, I don't know that I wrote it, um, quite that, um, intentionally that, it, that I would call it a poem, but it's near that. It's sort of like prose that just runs on and on, um. So this is how it came together. I like, though I did press my paper. It didn't get as flat as I was hoping it might, but I don't mind. I don't think it's too crumply. Um, and I do think that it looks similar to um, the pages of her cookbook that have the little splatters um, and brown spots and smudges, especially I tried to do extra on the corners that would make it um, look more aged so I don't know I think it turned and then there's a her recipe for pecan pie on the back don't um, get upset with me we say pecan in my family um pecan um, <laughs> whatever uh, makes you feel better that's um, that's how we say it though um, so that's how the zine turned out there are still a few copies in my shop um, and I may do another little reprint in the future if people are still interested. But that was that was a fun little experiment, and it it makes me want to keep um, writing and and telling more stories and illustrating more stories. So I think that was good to get going. So I wanted to show you um, the difference between. Well, this this isn't a, probably a super fair comparison, but 
Um, this is the cotton ball pie. This is the pie that I use my cotton punis um, or punis. Um, so this is what you would buy from like um, a place that sells fibers for making for spinning yarn. Um, so if you can find a wool retailer, they will probably have some cotton um, punis for spinning cotton thread. Um, so when I use this, it's um, a more open fiber, I would say. It's just different. The texture is different than a cotton ball, and so it takes paint differently. Now this one, I think I did more co um, coffee when I was painting it, and that is partly why it's this different color, but I would have to say cotton balls, I think, I feel like, and I can't explain why, but they just always look a little bit dingier um, when you paint the cotton balls. I, I just really don't understand why that happens, but there is a difference. Um, and then I did use um, some crepe paper to kind of make it look like a pan, but I just wanted you to see that because I still do use cotton balls for things, and I think it's kind of neat because it does look a little bit more aged, but if you want more control over how your paint <laughs> goes into the fiber and how um, consistent the color will be, the cotton puni is, sorry, my kitty's gonna hit the tripod, but um, that is gonna be a better bet. And I may in the future just sell like small amounts of it um, in my website shop just so that you can pick up a little bit of it without putting 20 or $30 um, into a big supply of it. I could just put together a very small um, spun cotton beginners um, kit, supply kit. Anyway, these are the little, um, I made little bakery boxes because I did a big batch of pies for um to sell pie ornaments to sell and so I made these little bakery boxes and this is how um the lattice crust turns out I think it's cute but it is pretty painstaking so I didn't include it in this make along because I really didn't think there were very many of you who would have the patience um to glue that together but um I do think it's worth it if you have a cherry pie or blackberry pie or someone who, you know, loves a lattice crust and you wanted to give them something really special, that would be neat. But anyway, I just wanted to talk for a minute about that. That might be a little bit um, deep dive nerdy, but um, it's interesting to me and if you are going to do much spun cotton, you might as well know that there are differences. So here's the pie that I painted earlier, um, that you saw me paint earlier. And I'm just going to show you one more kind of simple um, design that you can do in the top decorative kind of design. This um, I decided would be kind of an apple pie, which I think is probably in my unscientific pulling, I find that that is what people associate most with home or their moms or grandmas baking is apple pie. Um, very, very nostalgic. So um, it's not as pretty as if you're doing like a lattice cherry pie or a cutout with red. Um, obviously that's a little bit prettier, but apple pie is very um, kind of precious and meaningful to a lot of people. So I decided when I was making my apple pies, um, for the shop that I would do, I think I did one with hearts, um, but then I did several that had little houses carved on the top. So that's what I'm working on here is I'm basically just doing a very simple house shape. So the two sides and then a peak for the roof, you know, and then I just cut out a little kind of, you can either do a rectangular or kind of um, a rounded top door um, and that's and then I do a few vents on the side um, but that is all that I'm doing it's very very quick and simple um, and you could definitely probably 
um, just kind of use your toothpick to make an indentation while your um, cotton is wet and get the same sort of effect. And then I'm just using kind of light, light brownish, yellowish um, color to to show like the, like the um, apple filling is showing through. Um, you might want to do it a bit darker than what you think the filling would actually be because you're kind of trying to um, recreate that shadow that would be there and it needs to be um, it needs to be dark enough that you can kind of see the design without having to just really squint at it. Um, so yeah, you just you just kind of paint in your little design and then like with these vents, I really didn't carve them in very much. I'm just showing you how it looks if you kind of paint them on the top. And I think that is a fine looking effect too. Um, and then I'll show you my little, more like the 1 12th scale pie. I probably could have um, done something a little bit more delicate on that, but it's cute enough with a little heart. So if you are wanting to make more of just dollhouse food, that kind of shows you what you can do for that. And this um, pie, I didn't do any pan for. So um, here we have a few others that I made. I think they turned out um, very kind of sincere and homey, like like the pies I remember my grandma making. So thank you for being here with me today, and I wish you very happy holidays and happy making.